What's up guys, today we're gonna be building a custom subwoofer box for my truck right here. It's a 2005 GMC Sierra. Put two eight inch shallow mount SCAR subwoofers in there. Uh, I'm gonna put it behind the seat. This is just kind of a process of how to do it like custom for any vehicle. Uh, but we're building a sealed box, so nothing, nothing too crazy. But let's just go ahead and get right into what you're gonna need and like how you're gonna need to go through with this to make it work and like what you're gonna need to do and some of the skills you need to have and some of the supplies. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first step that uh, I took and what you're gonna wanna do is figure out where you wanna mount your subs. So obviously I'm putting on back here behind the back seat. Uh, so like you're gonna need a tape measure uh, so you can measure all the dimensions and stuff uh, to see like what around what size box you're gonna need and like to figure out what size subs you're gonna be able to put back there and stuff like that. So I measured and I wanna keep it in this space. Like I wanna keep it below this and in between these two black things on each side. Obviously I'm gonna take the uh, jack and stuff out. And I went ahead and I've done some research. That's the next thing you're gonna wanna do um, like with your subs that you're gonna get is see how much um, like volume they need so i obviously have done all the math here i got the dimensions of my box and i just drew it out that's the best thing to do is just draw it out do all the math make sure everything's going to work so i have my dimensions uh i made sure my volume is going to work uh for these box for the box and like for my subs and i just have everything drawn out here so if you have the same truck as me and you want to build a box, you can copy these dimensions because um, this should work perfect. But uh, so now I'm going to show you uh, what you're going to need material wise. All right. So since I'm going with eight inch subwoofers, I went with half inch thick MDF board. I got this at Home Depot. I have two two by four uh, sheets that are half inch thick. Um, if you're doing an eight inch subwoofer or smaller or eight inch speakers or smaller, half inch is gonna be plenty, like half inch thick. But if you're going any bigger than eight inches, I would definitely go with the three quarter inch uh, MDF. And I would just use MDF. I think that's a good material and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to use. But um, like you're obviously gonna need a tape measure, a pencil uh, to mark off stuff with. You're gonna need some saws, whether it be a jigsaw, a uh, table saw, that's the best choice is a table saw. I don't have a table saw, so I'm gonna be using my circular saw. And uh, you're gonna need a square and a level, stuff like that. You're also gonna need some wood glue and you're gonna need a few finish nails and a hammer or either a nail gun. But um, let's go ahead and uh, get started uh, cutting these boards up and building this sub box. All right, so I have my square here. So a, a good a trick to remember is always get a square and check the edges and make sure they're 90 degrees. Cause sometimes, especially if you're buying from like Lowe's or Home Depot, your edges aren't gonna be exactly 90 degrees. They may be off just a little bit. Like this right here. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so both sides of here are good. Uh, I've already checked all the other ones. Everything's good. And as you can see, I made a list of all the size boards I'm gonna need after I like went through my diagram and made sure that I have everything that I needed. So I like went and made a list of all the boards and the sizes I'm gonna need. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna start with these two biggest boards first. So I'm gonna do two 31 by 40, 31 by four inch cuts and two 31 by 10 and a half inch cuts and then we'll follow that up with the sides and the divider, and then we'll start putting it together. All right, so I went ahead and got the top marked out. So uh, always double check. I've double checked like three times. Make sure your links are right, you know, everything. And I always like to mark everything so I know what it is. This is the top, and I made sure it's 31 by four inches. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. I'll show you, I'm gonna make a little jig with some clamps and a, a board, like a two by four. That way we know we're getting a perfect cut because we don't have a table saw. We're using a circular saw. If you have a table saw, don't, don't worry about this. But we're using our jig so we can just run our saw right down that board and make sure we get a perfect cut. 
All right, so this is the jig I was talking about setting up. So uh, if you look at my saw, as you can see, let me sit it down right here. Um, this right here is where the blade is gonna cut. So see that one right there, the edge from the edge here to that is one inch. So I measured from here to here, that's one inch, all right? So you can see the line is on the right side of that little slot. So that means we're not gonna be taking up any of the our uh, piece with the blade width. We're gonna be cutting right on the outside of that line. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. See, I can just run the saw, like push it up against here and run it straight down. And it'll give me a nice, clean, straight cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, all the pieces, I'm gonna do exactly like this, just the exact same thing. All right, so as you can see here, I got uh, all the pieces cut. Uh, this is my bottom piece right here, the top piece, and this is a divider, because I'm gonna have two subs going in here, so I'm gonna divide the airspace. You don't have to, uh, I just am. But, um, so what I did is I screwed this divider in to the top and bottom uh, and I put some wood glue on there as well to uh, just help it be a little bit stronger so uh, next I'm going to stand this up and you can see I already have some finished nails in both of my sides but well, there's one side and then the other side is right here and uh, I'm gonna put the sides on and then uh, once I get those on there, I'm gonna put the back on, and then we're gonna wait and do the front last because we gotta cut our holes out for our speaker first. All right, so I got the sides on, and on the back right here, it's just sitting on there right now. It's like a perfect fit, it's super tight. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the wood glue down, and uh, then we're gonna press the back on and put a couple screws in it to hold it down. And uh, then we'll get started on cutting out the speaker holes for the front. All right, so got the box here. Uh, I let it dry overnight so the wood glue is dry. Uh, last night I also went ahead and siliconed the inside, all the edges just to prevent any air from leaking out, stuff like that. Uh, this side of it here, you can see I was having some big problems with my caulk gun and it is not pretty at all, but uh, I was originally using clear caulk and I ran out. Then I went to my next uh, bottle of caulk, which is white. And uh, it had like globs dried up in it. So yeah, that doesn't look good at all. But um, it's dry and uh, that's done. So now we're gonna go to the front piece, cut out our speaker holes, and then we'll glue it down, put some screws in it, silicone it up. All right, so I ran into quite the dilemma here that uh, is just a result of my poor planning obviously but i did not realize these bolts are sticking up out of the truck for the uh jack and stuff but i'm gonna use them to my advantage uh if you're if you haven't built your box yet obviously you can just put feet on your box to make it high enough that uh, it goes over that but what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna drill holes in my box to match those those uh bolts or whatever and uh, I'm gonna bolt them down. I'm just gonna use those to secure my box to the truck. That way it's not bouncing around. So uh, I think that's actually gonna end up being perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get the holes lined up and marked and stuff so I can drill them. All right, so here we go. Uh, I drilled the holes, the three holes. I drilled the hole right here and I'm just using the nut that was came off the uh, jack stand apparatus or whatever. Um, and it just screwed down on top of that bolt, that bolt sticking up through. The two little bolts over here, you can see the holes I drilled. They're sticking through those holes, but they don't come up high enough to go all the way through the box, but they do have to have the holes so they'll sit down on there, but it's not enough to get a nut on them. So I'll end up siliconing those holes up when I go to put the box in like permanently. And uh, then this, we'll just screw down and this will hold the box in place but let's go ahead and get the speaker holes cut all right so we're getting ready to cut the holes for the speakers in the front of the box so what i've done is i found the center right here that little dot right there and i decided to drop 
I'm gonna drop my speakers down a half inch off of center. So I brought the center of my circle down a half inch. That way the speakers will be as far away from the back of the seats as possible. So what I did is I have a caliper, right? So the diameter, the cutout diameter for my speakers or my subs are 7.3 inches. So I divided, by, divided that by two and then set my calipers equal to that. And then you put your calipers in the center of your circle like so and then you just pull your caliper around and it creates that circle and then you can see like you just kind of press firmly into the wood and it'll leave an indention with a perfect circle um and then i just took the pencil and like colored it in so i could see it better but if you don't have a caliper don't worry uh i'm about to show you a little trick with just a measuring tape a nail and a hammer and you can get the exact same results okay so i went ahead and uh, i took my nail and i put it right in the center right there of the circle uh you, like you just find the center and put your nail in there and then you take your measuring tape let me see if i can open it well you can see you see that little slot that little hole in the end of it what that's for is to put on a nail well, I didn't, I didn't leave the nail sticking up far enough, but you put it on that nail and then you can rotate the measuring tape around. You can get your radius of your circle and then follow it around with a measuring tape, you know, and then take your pencil and just kind of trace it and leave marks or whatever. But uh, that's how you do it. If you don't have a caliper, the caliper is definitely the way to go. Right, so I took the drill here and I just drilled two holes like right beside each other uh just big enough so I can get my jigsaw blade in there like so and now we can take our jigsaw and we can cut out both circles I just got to drill another hole over here so I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut out all right but we got the front done we got the holes cut uh, as you can see it wasn't perfect but it's nothing I can't clean up with some sandpaper. So uh, we'll get this back in the garage and we're gonna go ahead and mount it on the box and get the box completely put together. And then we're gonna clean the holes up and clean the edges up on the box with some sandpaper and a sander. All right, so one thing I am gonna do really quick, just cause I decided to change the way I was going with my subs is I am gonna drill a hole right here, just one hole. That way I can run the wires uh, through here so I can run my subs as parallel. If you don't put a divider in here, you don't have to worry about that. The divider really doesn't make a difference, I don't think. I just did it to add some extra like bracing. But um, once I put the wire through, I'll add a little silicone to keep air from like going through. But yeah, if you're gonna wire these in parallel, make sure you drill a little hole in this divider so you can run the wires through to the other sub. All right, so I got the box finished here, got the top put on there. Uh, the wood glue is drying right now, but the top screwed in, so it's all tight and it's gonna get a nice seal. But I did take and put some extra wood glue along here and here because I can't get up inside the box to silicone around like the top piece. So once all the wood glue finishes drying for this top piece, I am gonna run a bead of silicone over this and this on the outside, as well as this seam right here and the one on the other side to make sure it gets a nice seal all right everything's dry the box is finished here uh now we're ready for paint and i'm just i was just doing one last test fit and um i wanted to show you guys this but i put a little stop like a little wood stop in between the box and the seat uh that way the seat when it locks back it just keeps the box pressed up against the back here because uh let me show you when i pull the seat back that's not connected yet i just was testing it out so when the seat's not pressed back and pushing this up against the wall then this box just like shakes well i don't have the bolt on it but even when it's bolted it still has like a light shake so if i put this like right here on each side just a little stop and uh screw it into the box 
Then when I press the seats back and lock them in place, it'll secure this and uh, keep it from vibrating back and forth and just make sure it's nice and secure. All right, so I went ahead and I got my stobs attached on both sides to help secure the box. Everything's dry. Uh, so the box is ready to be painted, carpeted, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to carpet it just because I don't really care about looks mainly. Uh, and I'm trying to go the cheapest as possible. So I have some old black um, paint. It's like the bed liner paint. So I'm just going to scuff this up. You can sand it. Uh, like your edges, if they're not perfect, we're pretty good here and here. And it's sticking up a little bit there, but nothing bad at all. I mean, it's really square pretty much everywhere except right here. It's sticking up a pretty good bit right there. So we could take and sand that down and just make that surface even, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, so I'm just gonna scuff this thing up with some light sandpaper real quick. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spray it. All right, so here's the finished product of the box. It actually turned out really good. Uh, better than I was expecting. Uh, I didn't obviously do too good of a job like getting all the old silicone stuff off and uh, getting it sanded down real good. But that's because like I wasn't really too worried about the looks and I was just trying to get it done as quick as possible. But definitely, if I would have taken my time and really cleaned it up, this thing would look awesome. I definitely recommend that bed liner spray. It, it feels really good to the touch and it, it looks good. It looks really good. But um, there's the box, it's all finished. And I have my terminals over here. I just have two bolts and I have it colored red and black for my positive and negative. And that's what it looks like on the inside. I just have uh, washers on each side and then the uh, wing nuts on the side. And uh, I'll just be using uh, like ring terminals to connect to the bolts. And uh, I'll run my wires to the speakers like through there. And then out of this side, it'll go to the amp. All right, so I went ahead and made a little uh, plate to mount my amp to. Uh, as you can see, I just, there's a slot like this right here. And I uh, drilled two holes in and put two bolts under there to keep this like uh, mounted down to the seat. And uh, it's pretty, pretty strong. So the mount's gonna go on this. This is just that same MDF I used to build the box. And I used the same bed liner spray to, pay, uh, to spray it and it looks pretty good. And um, I'm about to take the box out so we can go ahead and put the subs in there. I got the subs right here two shallow mount eight inch scars the vd8 d4s and then uh, i got the 800 watt scar amp this is the mono block 800 and uh, i got their amplifier wiring kit so i'm gonna go ahead and put the subs in there i'm gonna get this thing wired up and see uh, how our box does all right guys well we got everything mounted and wired up so i'm gonna show you all my setup real quick and i'll start from the front and i'll work my way back to the subs and then I'll let y'all listen to the subs. So I got my uh, positive wire connected right there. And as you can see, let me zoom in. Uh, my terminals, they're kind of complicated. I couldn't get that ring terminal on there good. So that red plastic, I kind of had to cut out with a Dremel so my ring terminal could fit in there flush. And then my uh, wire terminal could screw into the battery. But uh, I got it on there. And then there's my fuse right there. It's just screwed into the fuse box. And then I have it ran through the firewall. I just cut a little hole in the firewall and ran it through. And uh, then we come over here and uh, have it coming out the firewall back there. I don't know if you can see it or not. That blue wire right there. And uh, it's just coming down behind this. And then uh, my RCA wire is coming out of my stereo and the remote wire. And then I have my base knob mounted right here on my console. And all these wires just run together through here under this plastic so they're hidden. I got them zip tied up real good. So it looks really clean. You can't see the wires at all until you get here back here to the very back. And they just come out this back piece right here. I could run them like back up in here 
I just haven't had the time and I need to cut the zip tie off. But um, the power wire, the RCA wire, the remote wire, all that runs up under the seat here. And uh, the seat, you know, it just folds up like this. So I got my uh, speaker outputs right here. We got my positive and negative. And this is where I grounded the amp to right here. Uh, I had to drill the ring terminal out just a little bit to get it to go over that bolt, but it wasn't nothing too difficult. And uh, I got my remote or my base knob wire and my uh, RCA outputs. And then I'll let you see my settings right here um, where I have my subsonic filter, low pass filter, gain, and the bass equalizer. I do have it set on an extra six decibels the subs are an extra six decibels that way uh, i can have it a little bit louder than i want using my bass knob all the way up and then i can turn it down to where i normally listen to but uh there's the subs and the box they look super good they have plenty of clearance behind the seats and uh so let's test them and like see i'll let you see how they uh sound and i uh, will check the voltage wattage the load and all that good stuff okay so i got my multimeter here i have it set to the load uh setting right here whatever that is on your multi multimeter that's what you want to have it on there uh at to check the load or your ohms or whatever so uh, i'm going to connect my two positive and negative terminals here on the amp and check my load it says 1.2 i checked it earlier it was 1.1 .1. there we go 1.1 so we're right at one ohms pretty much. That's our load. So now we're gonna set it to alternating current. And um, we're gonna just check the terminals on the actual subs when we play music. And I'm not gonna go up all the way and get like full voltage, but I'll play them pretty loud. And um, we'll see like what we get to and how loud that is. All right, I'm just gonna play a royalty free song. I have no idea what it is, just so, just to let y'all look at the speakers like while they're playing and uh, hear them for a second. And then uh, I'll put on a song that I know that has a lot of bass, but I'm only gonna play it for a second to test our voltage uh, so I don't get copyrighted. But I'm gonna go ahead and play this non uh, copyrighted music for y'all real quick and let you listen to it. All right, so that song you just saw, I had the bass knob turned all the way up, right there. And then uh, my volume was at 20. So my speaker goes up to 40, or my radio goes up to 40 on the volume. So uh, it was about halfway, could go up double that. So now we're gonna leave it on those same settings and we're gonna check the voltage. That way we can find out how much wattage is going to these two speakers. All right, so we got 34.9 volts. That's the highest reading we got on our multimeter. So if you put that into a wattage calculator using 1.1 ohms, which is what we calculated with the multimeter earlier, that puts us right at 1100 watts going into this box. So obviously that's divided between the two. Each speaker's a 600 watt max. So we were just under our max there and um just under the max wattage of the uh, amp the max wattage of the amp is rated at 1200 watts and our radio was only at 20 uh on our volume level you can see 20 right there uh it goes up to 40 so i mean we're halfway there and we're already at our max so i probably need to turn it down a little bit but uh personally earlier i did get 1600 watts going into this box like out of the amp probably shouldn't have done that i didn't mean to it was an accident i didn't realize i was putting out that many watts until i uh, hand calculated it so um i'm gonna turn it down which i never listen to my stereo this loud anyways this is just for this test um but yeah i mean it, it handled it fine for the past two days so um i'm super happy with the install super happy with this whole setup um I, I couldn't be happier. Oh yeah, one thing to mention, I didn't, my equalizer was completely flat on my stereo and my iPod that I'm using, the equalizer was completely flat on Spotify. 
so no bass boost anywhere except on the amp where i have it turned up six decibels on the bass equalizer uh probably need to put that back down to zero decibels but um other than that everything is completely just flat uh no extra bass boost or anything anywhere but um super happy with the setup hopefully this video inspires you guys to build your own custom box and order some subs for your vehicle um and if you have a truck like mine uh hopefully you can use this to your advantage and use my calculations and stuff and it'll save you a little bit of time but uh thanks for watching guys uh if you do build your own box or you find this video helpful in the comments leave me a comment saying uh, what you built or what you're planning on building for your vehicle and uh be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this i appreciate it um uh, appreciate you guys watching see you next time